good morning everybody welcome to the grey doors travel group webinar uh we're sorry for the delay there we were just having technical issues um this this tuesday morning trying to figure out uh, screen sharing and everything morning sham hope you're doing well so as always we're recording this webinar so please do feel free to chat or raise your hand if you want to speak or use the Q&A option. And Laura and Aman can answer any of your questions. You're in for a really good session today. So anybody that hasn't got a travel policy already or is wanting an update on the situation in terms of travel and COVID at the moment, they're here to talk through and answer any questions that you've got. So as I say, feel free to chat, raise your hand or use the Q&A throughout and we will get to your questions. And over to Laura and Aman now from DDG. Wonderful. Thanks, Hannah. And thanks, everyone, for, for, for joining us today. Uh, we're good to kick off now then, Hannah? Yeah? Yeah, Great. I will share my screen. So, yeah, so first of all, thank you, everyone, um, for, for coming along to the session today. Um, by means of introduction, um, so I'm Laura Busby. I'm Head of Sales for Grey Doors Group. So we, um, we do uh, business travel, leisure travel events and sports travel and um, so yeah uh, happy to um answer questions and field questions as we go i'm sure hannah will chip, chip in with them as well um and i'll hand over i'd say my my my, my uh, co-worker but i think more like work husband um a man yeah we, we, we me and laura have a I speak to you more than my, more than my other half to be yeah, fair we've so. had two meetings today we've been involved in so well, my name's Amon Pukami. I'm based in London and I'm the consulting manager at Grey Doors Group. My role at Grey Doors is to keep an eye on the industry, what's going on in terms of industry trends, also looking at what our clients' strategic missions are and, and looking at um, benchmarks in terms of what our existing client base at, at Grey Doors are doing. And put, effectively putting all of that together to assist clients with with what their roadmaps are either in the short medium or long term and currently as the hot topic is of course is COVID-19 so it was Brexit last this time last year I, I missed that um <laughs> I missed this morning. Well, it may be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I kind of think they just set all of this up to get us to, you know, to get about <laughs> <laughs> all the nightmare of Brexit. But yeah, here to, to assist with policy, here to help you assist with um, putting together your travel policy in regards to COVID-19. Thanks, Amanda. Um, so, so the kind of format of today will be a, a quick introduction to, to Grey Doors and who we are as a business, um, a, a bit of an overview of the landscape across the travel industry, which has obviously been significantly affected by the effects of, of COVID-19, COVID but the majority of the session will be practical advice and tips on how to redevelop your travel policy. And just as a, as, as a footnote to that, the, the first um, there was a recent industry survey went out to I think it was over 500 travel managers and 80% of, of, of travel managers surveyed said that they would be making changes to their travel policy in light of COVID-19. So what I would say is, is that whatever your, your palette, uh, whatever the makeup of your business, whatever your travel policy looks like today, I think it's relevant for every business to really look at, you know, how you, when are you letting your people out on the road? Why are you letting them out on the road? Um, and how are you going to support them to do it as safely and effectively as possible um, to deliver value to your business? So, so yeah, hope, hope that we can give you some really hands-on practical advice today. Um, and again, ask questions, please, please, as, as, as we go. Um, quick overview of Grey Doors Group. Thanks to the, the, the clients that we have on here and thank you to the OMP members that, that, uh, that come and listen to uh, any time myself and Amanda do these sessions. I think we've been working with Hannah and, and the team over two years now, so it's really nice that we, we've got such a good partnership with, with the OMP. Um, Grey Doors as a as a, a travel management company, we've been around since since the, since 1927, so we're the second oldest IATA licensed travel management company in the world. Um, and at oldest in the UK, there's one in Italy that's slightly older than us. Um, and we, we've been out, round, out owned outright by the Inchcake family since the mid nineties. So we're the largest independent travel company um, in the UK, which has actually helped us at this time because we, you know, we, we're just responsible to, to a family who, who have been incredibly supportive through, um, through kind of this, the, this period. 
Uh, recent news is our CEO, Suzanne Horner, and um, she's been with, with the company ne nearly 10 years. Um, she has, um, she's also chair of the Business Travel Association. So that's really helped us through this time to, 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 to kind of, well, well, firstly, lobby at government level for, for this, the changes. And you might have all seen the hashtag around safe travel. Um, but alongside that, Suzanne's also just been voted in LDC's top 50 most ambitious business leaders for 2020, um, which, is, which is a scheme that's um, which is supported by the Telegraph. So it, it, we, we feel like, although, you know, travel volumes have, 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 are obviously really rapidly decreased ac across across the world and um, we've had some real stable ownership to, to steer us through this uh, this period um, and kind of in, re in, in response to COVID-19 just a bit of an overview about kind of what we're seeing from our customers and on a day-to-day -day basis um, is I we've seen it really depends by sector so we have construction companies um, who their their absolute line to, to their staff is you travel business as usual we have stuff to build we have you know we have things to construct and right down to companies who are just have got a travel ban until next year so i think we've seen a lot of trends via specific sectors and so if anyone would like some one-on-one -on -one support to talk about travel in their business and in their sector happy to talk about that but that's what we've seen as a business for the month of october um out of all the bookings that we made 50 percent of the bookings were hotels um, 27% were air, so there, there, is, there is still some uh, requirement, and then the rest was ground transportation. And again, another theme that we've seen on the back of COVID-19 is our clients wanting to book every element of their trip in one, one sole, sole space. Um, so, so for instance, you know, right from when the minute the traveller leaves the door to the minute they return, that you know the, the company is responsible for the entirety of that trip and it's booked in one place via a travel management company. Um, you know to, to offer the, the best products at, at, at competitive prices but also in terms of the safe, safety aspect they know where their traveler is at all times in their journey so that they're the kind of the trends that we've seen and um and some and, and examples of kind of what we're booking for clients at the moment um so i'll move on to kind of the the current landscape and some and some top industry topics so i think we've kind of broadly um broadly speaking broken this into two sections so we'll talk a bit about what's going on in the travel industry and then we'll talk um about buyers and, and, and what we're sensing from 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 travel buyers out, out in the marketplace and um, so in terms of industry we're already starting to see mergers acquisitions consolidations of, of travel management companies so it was actually really sad to see um the, uh, I mean, you know, the demise of, 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 Tom, of uh, Thomas Cook and, and STA Travel. Unfortunately, we do feel that we'll see more of the more, more travel companies um, go into administration. Um, but also we'll see, see some consolidation. So we know that there's um, the, the Travel and Transport Group were, were recently acquired by CTM. So that, that, was, a, that was a big, a big news story in, in um, the business travel sector. So what I think we'll see more of in terms of travel companies companies both business and leisure is we'll see um mergers consolidations as as, as we roll roll out of um hopefully COVID-19 over over the uh, over the coming months um fortunately job losses so um is it, again the hashtag you'll have seen safe travel so I think over 50 percent of jobs within the business travel space um unfortunately unfortunately have been uh, made redundant so so yeah huge job losses for for the sector um a manager and if you've seen on in in, in terms of in, in terms of the safe travel hashtag and, and all your work involved in that yeah the, uh, the the current the current landscape with it is that um as you know it's like travel's taken the biggest hit in terms of in terms of the occupancy levels at hotels for instance are still around half that of what they were before and it's around 20 percent in cities it, so the percent occupancy, so um, and then you've got whereas in London, Manchester, Glasgow, um, these the the, the and Birmingham, those key cities are actually less around twenty percent. So it's a difficult time for the industry in general, um, even for domestic travel. So undoubtedly, that's having a huge impact. Um, you're seeing a lot of. Um, benefits going towards uh, you know a lot of support is being focused more on the hospitality sector um, but I, I think I, you know one of the 
issues that we're having in travel is that we don't really have the a kind of a Hollywood name or something like that to promote travel and the general consensus within the government's focus is that oh well you know Richard Branson's a billionaire so he can afford to prop up Virgin Atlantic by himself and so on and so forth off where risk that the the impact, of course, with all of that is that we're going to get a reduction in supply and which will increase prices. Uh, and that's something I'm, uh, I, I would discuss with you um, as we get into the travel policy piece later on and mm -hmm. how to combat that. And, and, and to end this slide on, on a much more positive note, man, <laughs> <just talk> <laughs> um, I, I think it's important to kind of be realistic what, what the industry has is, is, is kind of gone through over, over the last, last few months and, and obviously a lot, a lot of dear, dear friends and, and, and colleagues unfortunately losing their jobs. So I think it's important that we, we highlight the, the effect that it's had. But, but there's light at the end of, of the tunnel, so, uh, um, definitely with airport testing, man. So do you want to just talk us through that? Yeah, so we're getting, I, I don't know if you've seen in the news recently, but um, Boots have set up a, a, they've got a test where it gives you the result within 12 minutes, I believe. Um, but the cost of that is £120. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's for countries where there's a health certificate required for you to travel. You know, so you have to take the test within 70, 78 hours of departure. Um, and the, what the government have set up is that the, the reason why test, testing on um, arrival is not suitable is that it only actually captures, their, their findings show that it captures only 7% of COVID-19 cases. But this is, there's plenty of assumptions being made to that analysis, um, mostly that the the biggest assumption that's been made with that airport testing is that everybody who got on the plane did not have uh, COVID-19 to start with um, and so therefore they were captured beforehand and it does it ignores the general mix in terms of the number of cases within the population already so that's being combated whereas because other countries have taken on airport testing as a means to at least supply the key travel routes that uh, you know london new york uh, london beijing the, these kind of areas in which business travel is key so actually so the focus being is that can we support mobilizing people to come through uh, while securing you know the, while protecting within reason obviously and what that's the focus now is can we get airport testing underground there's there's trials being taken place at Heathrow um, and airlines are putting funding towards that to promote it um, and it's beginning to turn the dial within within the government to see this way of thinking mm -hmm. um, which is a positive step because the before, before they were keen to they were very dismissive of it as a potential um, workaround sure Thanks, ma'am. And um, so, you know, in, in my day to day job, my, my responsibility is really to, to, to speak to as many travel buyers out there as possible. So travel buyers and travel bookers to, to understand what are the hot topics and what what corporates are really needing from from um, from a travel management company moving forward. Because I think I think that that has really changed. And, and from the buyers I've spoken to, yeah, there's some real, real new needs that weren't that have they've moved to kind of the, the top priority so I, I think first of all information sources so ensuring that pre-trip on trip and post-trip the traveler and the corporate has access to the right level of information so pre-trip making the right decision on if you should be doing that trip and how you do that trip on trip have you got that traveler tracking support you know have you got that that coverage 24 7 and post-trip what happens if you come back and and you're you, you've developed some symptoms or a whole host of things so it, it's having access to the right right sources of information um at each point in the journey and um, if, if anybody information and um, we've developed a free resource on on um, the Grey Doors website, which is which um, I, I'll, I'm, hap I'm happily to, I'll happily share a link out. But we've aggregated data from a whole host of, of global content um, to, to, to put that information source in one place. But I think it's really important that you're equipped with the 
the right level of information at each stage of the journey. Um, building confidence. So a really cool idea that, um, that has come out from a, a couple of buyers I've been speaking to in the market has been around, well, how do you build confidence? And secondly of all, it's, it's you know, developing engagement groups across your traveling population. So yeah, client, a series of um, forums, some, some of the people are back in offices, so some of them have actually been around a table, some have, have, have obviously been virtually, but holding sessions with key traveller groups to really understand, um, you, you know, the litmus test, what is, how is confidence, what, how do people feel about getting back on the road, um, what support do they want, and, and really understanding what, what, your, what the travellers need um, at each stage of the journey, but building that confidence back up and looking at what the traveller needs. Um, I'm seeing some, some flashing comments. Hannah, do you want to interject with some questions at this point or comments? Yeah, does anybody have any questions at the moment? Happily, sorry, I, I saw a little flash, so I, uh, I, th I thought I'd just uh, check in, but yeah, feel free to just, uh, to, to just step back in and if, um, if there's questions or, or comments. Yeah, I think that was Aman posting the links in the chat actually. So he's just posted the toolkit links that you were talking about. Oh, awesome. Thanks. So everybody's Thanks. got those. Um, yeah, so feel free to, to jump on and have a look at that because there's some really good resources in there, as Laura said. And it's live data as well. So the information sources are up updated as, as soon as the World Health Organization um, content is updated. So, so it, it comes from source. Um, driving value. So, so driving value is, is obviously going to be important to travel buyers in the new world. Um, and I think what we have to remember is, is why, why companies travel for business in the first place. Um, so a man kind of leaning on you a little bit here, but I know that you've spent a lot of time in your, in your hashtag save travel, um, online videos talking about the benefit of business travel. Um, so just be interested if you if you want to interject and just give us a little bit of a, a steer on 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 those numbers and how that looks. Sure. Um, so effectively, generally, travel and tourism is is worth around um, it's it's around thirteen percent of the UK's GDP um, and uh, employs uh, ten percent of the UK workforce. So that's directly um, and business travel within that uh, accounts for over two hundred and fifty billion uh, of the UK's revenue. So it's a huge factor, and that's computed not only in terms of the traveller when they arrive and what they spend, and but in terms of how productivity is measured. So a general measurement is that for every uh, pound spent on uh, business travel, it's um, the return to that is one pound fifty. So the benefits to using business tra to having that productivity. I'm always reminded of a quote by. Um, uh, you know, looking at it from Steve Jobs is that what he was a strong believer in having the networking, having those dynamic conversations. And, you know, you look at somebody who's, who works in tech, his idea would be that perhaps doing Zoom calls and having FaceTimes and so on and so would negate the need to meet face to face. And he was quite a categorical about what's the, the sparks that people can have by just having those general conversations. For example, today, with in the normal world, this would be somewhere where we would meet at a specific location, and we'd have an opportunity to have a breakout where you'd have coffees and stuff and have a discussions and uh, you know those are where the real connections are made and you can answer those specific questions rather than for a chat facility um and so there's generally that's been missed greatly and i think the, mm -hmm. there's certainly all the surveys suggest that you know that the real you know that the real break point will be when a vaccine is announced, isn't it? And then you'd know that you could travel and bookings in advance will start to take place again because that's what's missing today is that advanced booking um, that we yeah. don't have. 
Thanks, man. And, and I, and, and for the record, I, I, a man didn't know I was going to ask him that question. So I completely threw you under the bus then. And actually the fact that, you know, those numbers off your head is pretty <laughs> impressive. But I, you know, I didn't realize that one, what, you know, one pound 50 return for every pound spent shows, shows why, you know, that's the real value of, of, of business travel. And I think sometimes buyers can miss that if they're, if they're quibbling over, you know, 50p on a transaction fee of making a booking, actually the real value is the other end. And so I think, you know, what what we're on is you know why why have you ever traveled for business and what's the roi and how can we help you track that roi to help your business bounce back as well so i think it's understanding that the economy will bounce back when business well you know we're with the support of business travel so so i think there's there's a whole bigger value piece um within that and, and, and i think a lot of questions i'm, I'm getting from customers is is, is less about you know the price of a hotel the price of my transaction fee but more about i want to look at real consolidation so how do i really consolidate my entire program globally how do i um, incorporate my expense management element into travel because what i want to be able to see is is if if um if my travelers are booking things outside of the travel program, it will show up in my expense category. So how can I stop, you know, by, by combining those two elements together, again, is another opportunity to drive value and true, true consolidation. So the consolidation has been a real kind of, um, a, a key, key theme that we've seen of how buyers really want to drive value. And then finally on this, and, and I suppose it kind of it kind of speaks for itself. And I suppose we all want a little bit of clarity on where we can travel to and where we can travel. But I think it really is about, every business developing clear processes and data so your your travelers know when they can travel how they travel what the end-to-end -end process is and and how you're going to show a level of responsibility as a business to capture that data and 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 display a duty of care you know we we've introduced during lockdown a, a new traveler tracking facility that can track travelers by, via their gps and um, again that that's that's moved mountains from from kind of the the old more traditional world of, of travel management so we're working much more closely with with technology companies and expense management providers to to really understand that total end-to-end -end, um data capture so they're, they're the kind of the hot topics that we're seeing across across kind of the landscape um, so hopefully that just gives you a bit of a flavour of, of, of where we've come from and, and, and what's happening in the industry at the minute. So the rest of the time is is totally practical stuff um, by the brains of the outfit. <laughs> so I will um, hand over to all steps that, that we would look at in, in terms of developing a travel policy. So um, thank, thanks for that, Laura. And um, what, what I would say is that what we work on in, in the consultancy department at Graydoors is that we've looked at, there's effectively from a, what uh, Laura defined as the end to end, the, the, the decision making. So if we move on to the next slide, I'll, I'll just go through that with you, is that um, you, what, what we want to do is go through what is the beginning of the process within defining travel and then what's the end game in terms of return and all the steps within that is that covered off and I think the benefit behind COVID-19 if there is any benefit at all is that it's got it's 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 the travel policy was there beforehand it defined the central travel you know like um, in terms of uh, within every policy that I've seen it's it's the statement's always been there that don't travel unless it's essential consider other means consider the environment but i've never really seen within a policy what is what is the definition within that business of what is essential you know so i think that's where i've been working with businesses today to, to help them identify that and what i do with businesses within my daily workload is that focus on a number of measures oh, there's 28 of them is that what potential kpis within that that could help a business to define what is travel how to get there what to do when you're there and what's what the return what to do when you return all of those measures can greatly improve the process of a travel policy um, because effectively that's your steering wheel um behind any policy going forward so i'm going to go through each of those processes with you today um 
every business varies, but here are some considerations. So you've got four steps to travel. You've got the planning phase. That's when you as a business define what is, when you decide within the travel phase, okay, we, we need a meeting. You know, there it is. That's the planning phase. Okay, what do we do from that point on? Um, then you've got the booking when you actually go ahead and book. And this is where the travel policy in theory starts to take place. This is where it starts to get referred to, but we believe it should be a step before. Then you've got during the trip when you're, when the towards mostly security and, um, and safety, and also in terms of making sure that they're applying to budgets uh, regarding ground transportation, per diems, these kind of things. And then post trip when they return is the feedback taken on board is, um, and the recovery times are mostly taken in regards to that as well as expense reconciliation. So I'm going to go through each of these steps with you with some advisories and considerations to have within your travel policy, not just related to COVID-19, but um, in the travel and how you can make it as robust as possible with the emphasis that travel uh, COVID-19 has brought this need to the forefront, but it was always there as I saw it. So if we move on to planning, please. Laura. Um, so within planning, as I say, how do you define what is acceptable travel? What is essential? So one of the biggest factors I'm working on with my clients is, okay, so we want to go out and see businesses, you know, um, but we want to also ensure the safety of our travelers. Um, and so we, what we're doing is that what most companies are doing today is that they're blocking internal travel. So by that meetings between departments is being done on Zoom and so on. And anything meeting a client or meeting a prospect, that is a, that is being permitted, obviously, within the parameters of what's safe within the government's um, locations that they have today. So how do you define what's acceptable within travel if you were to allow internal, internal meetings? Is that you, you could look at the time, the time of the meeting. So, for example, is it over two hours? Uh, and if so, how many other people are there? So is there four or five individuals? Do you limit it to six? You know, the parameters within the government guidelines in terms of how it's, you can meet for the number of people doesn't apply to a business context, but do you want to have the rule of six anyway within your business? Spaces, how the context of where you meet, this is where resource planning comes into place. So how many days do those individuals meet for? Um, can you limit that to limit all overnights? Do you limit the number of individuals that are in that meeting and also whether they are from a specific department or not? Say, for example, um, you have a sales meeting, you know, from all the sales department meet together and then one of them has COVID-19 and then passes, the, then it means your whole sales force have to quarantine because they came in close contact. So, so from a continuity perspective, there's a risk. Therefore, do you limit the amount of individuals from a specific department go to a meeting together? We, we've had this before where, you know, the number of people on a plane from a specific department was limited in case that plane, you know, unfortunately crashes and then from a business continuity perspective. But now you need to look at it from a meeting perspective and quarantine, you know. So in addition to that, they, you know, many policies had, um, um, if you wanted to attach a holiday post your business trip, you know, the, um, you can add a Saturday night stay over and, you know, in, enjoy the spoils of the, the specific location. Now I need to consider whether that's, whether that's a, an appropriate measure to have at the moment. You know, do you get them people to come uh, return back without mixing family as well into the equation? Because the more people, the more risk, you know. So again, that needs to be limited. Then you have, in terms of itinerary setting, most travel management companies um, facilitate uh, the, the air, the hotel and the rail journey. But what you need to consider from this point forward is the door-to-door the -door aspect. So 
you, you need to look at things like um, the taxis, the ground transportation to get there, whether it's appropriate to use public transport at this moment in time. Whereas previously, what we've noticed in travel policies was that that was encouraged for budgetary reasons. But at this moment in time, it may not be. So you may look at looking at vehicle hire, um, whether that's appropriate also looking at taxi firms that have been vetted um, you know have, have wear masks and so on and so forth and also from your preferred suppliers you need to go back into the negotiation with those preferred suppliers in terms of looking at them from a safety perspective do they meet certain ISO qualifications have you actually done a trip to these preferred suppliers have you tested them vetted them post these core conditions being t put in place. The, what I've noticed is that a number of my clients have never actually met the, the person, the procurement person or the office manager, never actually met the gone. Um, this may need to change to be able to test the practices yourselves to see if this, if it is, in, is appropriate and also gaining feedback from travellers that if there are any faults within the preferred suppliers. Laura mentioned uh, return on investment. That's with budgets being limited, you know, the economy is, is shrinking, we all know that. Um, so therefore there's going to be a bigger, when we do return to travel fully, is that there's gonna be a focus, a, a budgetary focus. And it's therefore defining what, in terms of return on investment is, how do we measure that if it's a um now there's four real measures when you're doing a business trip does it have you increased have you won new business um has that trip assisted in retaining more but existing clients so when and how do you measure that um you know so if you did you one of the things you can do within retention whether you've um retained the clients or not is to look back in time and to see the the businesses that you've worked with um how many times have you visited them and what the impact is in terms of say for example you have one account that you visited five times and there's another account that you visited once or twice in the year what's with that kind of that's having in terms of that business's agreement to renew with you and also an agreement to spend more with you um so increasing profitability as a business you also have aspects to consider such as productivity in terms of training so if you have a training trip what's the what is the impact of that trip going to be on the business for for an individual if it's a sales training are they going to be able to sell more is it going to be customer focus you know customer service training and therefore can you measure the impact that that will have on retention these are the kind of information that when you say essential trips only, you need to define it more clearly as to is it internal, is it external, what's the number of days that somebody's able to travel, number of people, and also what is the impact? Can that be measured? If not, should you be going on that trip? Um, with budgeting will come into effect uh, a lot more now. So, you know, as I mentioned before, one of the things that you can work on specific routes that you've traveled before and setting a budget to that. And I, I think this is quite key because um, a colleague of mine has done some analysis um, who writes for The Independent is that he did some analysis that focuses on the, the, the price that a, tr that a sp specific trip to Edinburgh, from London to Edinburgh, is on air and hotel, I mean, air and rail at the moment. And he, he worked it out is that the price is fluctuating by five pounds every minute. So you could look at, you know, 1138 and it's showing up as a hundred pounds London to Edinburgh on, on rail. And then he's checked it again and it's 105 pounds, uh, uh, you know, a minute later. And therefore th this is the environment that we sit in because previously suppliers would constantly look at whether um, the way they'd set prices is historic or spend. So what happened last year for Easter holidays? What was the spend, you know, what was the spend profiles and so on? But now previous behaviors are out the window. You can't really use that. So they're guessing 
they're constantly setting prices and changing it all the time based on what the competition are putting out there and also any kind of bookings that are trickling through at all. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye out on that. And does that change your advanced purchase requirements, um, which I'll go through in a minute. Authorization, um, this part I'm spending most of my time on is because th this particular planning phase is where your policy perhaps didn't hit before, but should be considered right at the outset, because this is key, is that is your approver, what we've noticed within our business is that our clients, 95% of bookings that have gone through to approval have been approved. For me, that's always been too many. You know, because then, therefore, how much work is your approver actually doing, your line manager, in terms of looking at when they see a notification? Because we have an app, you know, uh, email facility that to the approver. It says that, you know, John Q is trying to make a booking from this location to this. This is what the spend it's in or out of policy and then they it gives them the advisory whether they should approve or not um and currently what we're seeing is that 95 percent of those were going through but is your approver trained to work out what what is the policy in terms of assessment of risk not just based on is it budgetary wise is it um, an expensive trip or not um, so it's those considerations you need to take there and therefore is the line manager the most appropriate or is it someone in hr or the risk department that should be doing it if we move on to um plan uh, to the next phase which is booking this is typically where you'll see your travel policy being referred to as i say it should have been referred to far earlier in the process but this is where somebody pulls out the travel policy and goes okay who do I book with um, what you need to consider is whether your current policy of booking online which saves money of course by reducing transaction fees is appropriate based on the level of information required now Laura shared with you our toolkit which gives you quite a lot of information as to how you know certain um government policies are in regards to um you know quarantine measures in regards to passport and visa and so on but also what you need to inform yourself of is those kind of conversations that you have in regards to what is the current infection rates going on what is the um ppp ppe requirements that i need and also is it safe for me to book now? Is the trend towards COVID-19 giving me the impression that this place will be blocked off um, shortly or not? So it's conversations that an expert um, tra tra travel individual can provide. And therefore, do you need to relax your online booking requirements? Uh, I'd recommend the use of downloading the apps, putting that into the policy. We have the tracking app that allows you to be able to track the exact location of an individual. You, you may see that that would be a violation, so to speak, of people's, some people feel quite strongly about being tracked and therefore the app allows, you know, you can have apps and notifications whereby it's tracking as to where that person is in the specific trip. Have they booked, have they checked in at the hotel? Are they now at the, on the rail station? Where are they in the specific journey? And are they feeling okay? You know, are they checking in on a health check? You have the payment method. Obviously, we're going through more and more of a low touch environment, minimizing those. So anywhere where you can get um, bill back set up, um, you know, avoid being in a cashless position base. And also, all the vouchers from the refunds that you've you've collected from hotel um, from airlines where they were refusing refunds but providing vouchers make sure that those are utilized before you move into using cash also use a travel management company because they will put it on their account you know hey managers luckily not here to this, but using a travel management company means that your cash flow is 30 you know 30 days be beneficial because you use a travel management company they will pay on their account and then you pay them you know 30 days later so there's those things to factor in then you get into the policy itself in terms of booking behaviors what class you travel in um, there's a requirement 
there's a consideration now whether and from a social distancing point of view, you know, whether you have a space between you on the um, on air, on rail and those kind of things, whether that's possible. And if not, whether you consider giving, you know, like a business class and so on and so forth, whether that needs to take place. I think the biggest change in the industry now is advanced purchase. In your policies, you would have things like 14 days, 21 days before the departure, you would need to make a booking. That seems totally inappropriate now in the COVID environment because um, Spain, for instance, was put on the travel corridor list, approved 15 days later, it was taken off. So if you would have booked it on a 14 day in advance policy to go to Madrid for a meeting, you know, um, for, if you had booked it 14 days in advance on the day of departure you would have been told that you have to quarantine on the way back so that's not an appropriate measure today how do you work around that um if you can't book in advance my recommendations are that you book uh, flexible tickets make sure that there's cancellations um uh, free cancellation involved and also that you set budgets per route so therefore fluctuations in prices um, within that. So if you are not booking in advance, you book um, and you don't want to buy a, a flexible ticket because you deem it too expensive, is at least set a budget whereby a cap in which the travel, the cost of the trip should be. And therefore, you're, you know, you're not spending wildly on a trip to Edinburgh, for example, um, which at times has shown at being £400 or it's been shown as um, £50. So you can be paying all of that within a 14 day period. So just be, be patient, you know, look at the market more, um, more often, look, look at prices and you'll see the flux yourself. In terms of suppliers, I, I mentioned before, I won't go too much into this because I've spoken about it already, is that um, you, you need to be looking at it from a perspective of going, making sure that your preferred suppliers are used because your preferred suppliers, if you've gone through the safety checks and the budgetary negotiations, is that your travellers actually have a duty of loyalty to your travel policy. A business sure that the, the policies to ensure that travellers have this as a safe environment as they witness at home in their office work, but also a travel a travel traveller has to use the policy that's been stated. Therefore, if they arrive in Bangalore and then use a local taxi firm instead of the designated taxi firms that you have supplied, um, they are indeed liable for not being loyal to the policy. I recommend auditing any suppliers that you have today um, and auditing your process. Ask yourself, what if, um, the what ifs, the key ones today is, what if a traveler gets COVID-19 whilst they're on the trip? How does your business react to that? Do, if it was at 4 a.m. or if it was at 4 p.m.? Do you have local support? What do you do regarding the safety of that individual in terms of having them quarantined and returning back safely? And how does the business continuity take place if that traveler has caught COVID-19 or has come into contact with some, someone with COVID-19? Um, and do you have the insurance? Do you have the appropriate healthcare set up? Obviously, we want to all avoid getting COVID-19. You may you you absolutely should include is the PPE, and I recommend actually providing your top travellers with a PPE pack, um, you know, a physical pack, including face masks, sanitary wipes, you know, them, and also the, the you know like the hand sanitizer. The, these factors all important to to have within um, within a traveller toolkit, and they're we're not at the point where these were being charged at you know 100 pounds for hand sanitizer which was going on when covid first hit it, fortunately the prices have gone down it, it's an investment well worth making and i'm sure your travelers would appreciate it too if we move on to the next slide because i understand time is short um <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna move much quicker. I promise you. I can see Laura stressing out there. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, never. never. <laughs> my screen seems to have. Hold on a second. Sorry. So the next. 
The next one, this is um, on trip itself, one of the things you need to factor in is traveler tracking. There needs to be a method in which um, your travelers are tracked. The best way of doing that is booking for your travel management company, because if you're booking for your travel management company, whether that individual has a tracking app or not, so at the very least, you, you can on the, on the spot if, if um, the travel corridor closed one particular, because what they do, the government at the moment, is on a Thursday, they announce each country that's been taken on and off the, the quarantine list. And that on that Thursday, it applies to the Saturday. So which is an unprecedented level of change to um, you know, to our freedoms of travel. So therefore, what you need to do is on the Friday, you need to rapidly download the data and see, do I have anyone in Turkey that's just recently been taken off the list or, or you know, like, um, it, and, or do I, you know, or is there any bookings that are being taken place beyond Saturday that I need to be informing of that now need to quarantine or can we cancel that trip? So there's those no notes to take place. Um, Laura, it's just got to, I don't know if you can expand that page. Again, it's, um, it's, it's all right. And in regards to the, the travel, while the travel is away, you also need to have policies in place in regards to, let's be honest, the traveling at the moment is not going to be as comfortable as it was before. So therefore the health, and the wellness, the mental wellness and the physical wellness of an individual should be taken into place. Um, so you should, you should be promoting uh, use of health facilities where obviously it's available in that country and it's safe to do so. And also the length of tr travel in which an individual travels today, whether, they, whether it's safe for them to have as those road warriors who go out to trips quite often, whether it's safe for them to do so at the moment to be going out to that many trips, and whether you limit an individual, if they go out once a month, uh, they're away for two weeks, then they need to have a two week break before their next meeting, you know, international trips I'm referring to, whether that's a policy that you need to take place. Um, what, what I've put in here as well is that you need to, of the environmental aspect don't forget to limit the amount of luggage that you take not only from a um you should be advising us to your travelers not only from an environmental viewpoint but also from a covid19 perspective um and using things taking your own straw um you know the, my ceo always talks about her metal straw that she has <laughs> It's not metal, I'm sure it's some, but it's reusable straw. She takes it everywhere. And now I'm beginning to think with COVID-19, she's onto something, actually. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so, and th these are the kind of things you need to take into account. If we move quickly to return, um, on your return, the last phase of the trip, what, I'm, what I strongly believe in is that what you need to do is not only do expenses, which if you use a travel management company, you should look to link that to a trap to an expense provider, and therefore there's no receipts. You know, um, well, not no receipts. It limits the amount of receipts that you use um, because it's linked together. But also from a feedback perspective, um, is making sure the biggest promoters of travel within the business will be the people who have travelled before. So use that feedback from other travelers and promote that to everybody else. So I went on a trip, for example, go to Frankfurt, I informed everybody of how that went. Um, you know, what was, people asked me the question, what, you know, what was it like at the airport? What, you know, is it any different today on the plane? Did you have the seats next to you? Was it busy? Did you feel unsafe? Make sure that you promote that people feed back and have that option to, to, to spread that within the business and learn from it. Uh, that's key and that forms part of your evaluation as well is that did the return on investment carry through did it actually make a difference or not have that involved within your business is to have that feedback contained that goes into your um, sales force or whatever tool that you you're, use to feedback on travel make sure that that's continuous process is taking place I'm going to shut up now because I, um, I think that in terms of advisories, that's, that's a good starting point for the policies. 
Laura, do you have any any comments? Yeah, probably just, probably to move on to um to, to the final final piece. I, I think listening to a man. I mean, I I've, I've worked in trouble for a long time, and listening to a man who spends his day analysing in great detail what's going on in the industry, which is changing second by second by minute. And so I suppose, and, and, and you know, for me who works in travel, it could be quite easily to become quite overwhelmed um, in, in, with, with how quickly the landscape is changing. So I think, um, you know, it, it's worth kind of finalizing and summarizing here about um, us as a travel management company are here to help. And I think that more importantly than ever, whichever travel management company um, you work with or are considering working with, use one. <laughs> because what, what, what I think no company wants to, to do is be, is be, is be left, um, you know, kind of manage, managing quite a critical situation for one of their travellers um, with no, no support or help from an expert. So I think um, hopefully this framework has been really useful um, as, as kind of a final, a, a, some final offer as always, I'm always happy to have an introductory travel and expense discussion with, with any of the OMP members, um, whether you're using a, a travel management company, whether you're not, whether you're reviewing, whether you just want some advice and some tips, happy to have an introductory discussion. What, we, what we've done for quite a lot of OMP members in the past um, and, and, and through, through this period has been ad hoc support. So you might not want, you might not have the time to do something like a full on RFP contract out to travel management company, but you might just want a couple of trips booking and so a bit of ad hoc support. We're happy to do that. We've got some great operational people who are that they, they are fitting their day in day out booking travel, so they understand the moving beast that is booking travel. So if you if you just want a couple of flights booking, please do re reach out to us. Um, supply guidance. Um, I think if if you have a program where you have continually managed your own supply chain so you've dealt directly with airline deals and hotel deals and um, part of a man's role actually is to run um supply rfps for our customers so you know definitely it's worth reviewing all the suppliers and previous rates that you had and getting some advice so so a man can work really closely with, closely with you on on that piece and whilst what we've provided today is a framework for all the components that you need for your travel policy, uh, we're happy to run one-on-one -on -one sessions giving, you know, uh, further advice or, or more of a consulting approach to, to your specific business um, and help you in those tweaks and, and redevelopment. So I think if, if you do want some one-on-one -on -one support, happy to run those consulting sessions. As you, hopefully you've seen from uh, a man lives and breathes this, breathes, um, this stuff, so, so he's, he's got a whole wealth of um, knowledge he can bring to your programme. Um, so yeah, thanks again for for, for for people that turned up and, and watched us after as well. I think to end on end on um, a positive from us is that travel will bounce back. We're seeing a really pent up need and desire from our our, our customers to want to get back on the road and travel. So it will bounce back. Um, and more than ever, now is the time to future proof your program. And um, in the sales world, we're actually busier than ever at the minute because I think buyers are taking this downtime of travel is a real good opportunity to go right let me get my house in order let me understand a to z how pe how we're going to book how we're going to manage our data how we're going to drive best value how we're going to keep everyone safe um it's a really good time to future proof, proof your program and um, so if if you want any of that help um reach out to to myself and or a man um and and, and we're happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you um and look at that, Hannah, three minutes spare. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time for questions, right? Um, awesome. Does anyone have yeah. any? <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I found that really, really useful. And as always, you know, this will be uploaded to YouTube afterwards. So if anyone wants a recap at any time, then you can watch it there. And does anybody have any questions at all for Laura or a man? You can chat them or use the Q&A or raise your hand if you want to. I have a question while everybody's thinking. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of using a travel management company, what would you say, and, and Laura, we've had this situation, right, with, um, with the company that I work in and trying to convince them to, to use it, which obviously we have. Um, what would you say are the top three yeah. reasons or benefits? Sorry, I'm looking at this screen because I've put the cameras over there and your slides here. Um, but what would you say are the top three reasons <laughs> for having 
a travel management company in place? What are the top three benefits to, to both of you? I know, man, you mentioned about the payment delay, and I think that's a really useful one that a lot of people forget about um, to manage cash flow. But what would you say, perhaps two or three others? Yeah, the, the, the cash flow is king. So, so yeah, one invoiced account, consolidated payment is, is a key one. And the other is, is duty of care. So I speak to loads of travel bookers um, that will get calls from their CEO or whatever at three in the morning. My flight's been cancelled, help me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's having people, experts answering the phone and getting you out of, <laughs> out of some pretty, pretty dark places 24 seven. So, and that would be a key question I would ask if, if you're looking to work with a, a travel management company is understanding, um, you know, what the processes are for when things go wrong, wrong and you, and, and you need them at some point. So I, I think that's, that's a key one. Um, and, and I think the, the, the third bit is, is, is product and supply chain. So it's our job to vet, all of our product and supply chain and um, and negotiate on your behalf. So you may have a small kind of a small tiny program in which case you can take advantage of all of our content that's a booking.com or Expedia rates that we bring in. Um, or you might be a huge massive corporate in which case, you know, a man would run um, an air, air RFP and renegotiate all, all of your airline deals. So whichever end of the scale you're on, um, you know, let it be, let it be the, the TMC's problem to negotiate on, on, on your behalf. Perfect, thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions from anybody that's on the attendees? Super. All right. Well, we'll wrap up there then. Thank you so much to both of you. Once again, it's been a really useful session. Aman, I am in awe at your knowledge that sits in there about travel and your mm -hmm. facts and figures that you can just reel off. It's incredible. So um, well researched. And I think um, you're the perfect guy for the job sitting as an outsider that knows nothing about the industry. So <laughs> <laughs> however much credit that gives, but it's, it's impressive to say the least. So thank you both so much. And um, Thanks for having us. Pleasure. Take All care, right. everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye.